Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today, we are going to attempt to fix an electronic drum kit. I would have never thought about buying one of these, but this got sent into my PO box and it was a nice surprise. I almost cancelled the PO box because they wanted a next instalment of £380 and it's been a bit of a headache for me. I know that items haven't been arriving. I know they've been getting sent back to sender. I also know that international items have been getting destroyed. How nice is that? I've done nothing on my end to warrant any of this. This is just the way it is. And when you go to complain, you get given an email address that doesn't exist. What a big pile, big heap of you know what. So uh, anyway, I've uh, booked it again for another year because the odd time an interesting item does come through. Now, there's no note or anything in the package. I've looked back at my emails. I get an awful lot of spam emails, so the good emails get lost within the spam. I don't read them all. Uh, I just scan them every now and then. Uh, I can't find any mention of a drum kit. The return address is from a bloke called Raj. So Raj, if you have sent this, thank you very much and when it arrived the batteries were completely dead i've swapped the batteries over it takes four aa batteries double a batteries and it's still dead interestingly it makes a little of a little bit of a popping noise when you turn it on so if i go to the on button here so it doesn't do anything there you can see nothing's happening on the screen and there's no sounds we also have these little pedals down here but when we go to turn it off it pops listen did you hear that there so there is some bit of life there so hopefully it'd be quite an interesting one so let's take it over to the blue map take it apart and see if we can find out why it's got no power okay let's just unplug these little foot pedals from the back here you've got options to have i think a headphone jack audio in as well power adapter and a usb jack so now model number here is I don't know. Oh, it's 2016, so it's not that old. Uh, 276501 is just a Sheffield E drum set. Now, the quick look online, apparently these were sold in Lidl. So Lidl's like a, uh, a German supermarket here in the UK. So I've fitted fresh batteries to it. Let's just double check we have got the voltage. So 1.5, there's four of them. They are in series, I think. So if we were to go here and here we should have six ish volts yeah there we go right okay let's take it apart and see what's happening we've got a load of screws around the place i think i want to be kind of dealing with the power switch to begin with because i think it's going to be okay from the power going into it because it does make that little clicking noise when you turn it off so i think could it just be as simple as that on and off switch Right, I'm going to need to get a long, thin screwdriver to get a lot of these out. Right, so there's loads of crosshead screws all the way around the place. So uh, it's going to take a while. While I'm doing this, I'll shout out the My Mate Vince Massive. So this month, the Massive consists of KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Edinburgh Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Lowbrook Auto Sales, DJ VG, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Braden Butts from Connecticut, and Kenneth Blenstrup Sorensen. So thank you to them. Thank you to loads of the other patrons as well. I've got three different levels. And thank you to everyone else that gives help in the comments. Watch just the odd advert as it plays. That's how we YouTubers get paid. And also people that send things into the channel as well. Do you know what I'm going to do? Let's take off these because I don't want this to break. These just plug in via what looks like 3.5 millimeter, maybe a bit bigger actually. Probably 3.5 millimeter mono jacks there. Just into here. Made in China.
Well, I think they're all done. No, one here. Here we go. Excellent, right, so we've just got two wires going off to the battery terminal here because all the screws will fall out if I turn it the opposite way. So let's unplug the battery terminal. Yeah, so red's positive and it can only go in one way anyway. Good, okay, so I don't have to worry about losing those screws. Now, what have we got here? So, on and off switch is, whoops, on and off switch is there. Oh, the speaker just flew out. So that's the on and off switch. So let's concentrate on that to begin with. Oh, look, they've got the little uh, piezo buzzers here. Or piezo. So now, is this working here? Maybe not. Let's unplug this one. I don't know why, I could be completely wrong, but I think this is gonna be an easier fix rather than a nightmare. Okay, so what have we got here? So there's five contacts. The outer two, I think, are gonna just be the anchor points. So it's gonna be these ones here. So it must be these two when it's off and these two when it's on or there to there when it's on. Let's see. Let's go to continuity. Okay, so that's in the off position. Let's turn it on. And that's in the on, excellent, that's good. The switch is working, because that would have been a bit boring. Now, let's see if we can trace to see where it goes to after that. Second, where did I unplug the batteries from? Uh, the battery was here, up here. So let's take it from this side here. So it comes into here, this is the speaker, and then it goes down on this wire here, doesn't it, to this board. Oh no, but we've also got it going across here onto this board here. I think we need to pop the batteries in and trace voltages. This is the part I love, is just trying to figure out what went wrong. Eight ohm, three watt speaker. Now, I will check the speaker, but we know there's nothing coming up on the display. That's why I don't think it's anything to do with the, uh, with the speaker. Let's just double check. So we're on ohms. Let's see if we've got eight ohms here. Let's unplug the speaker from here. Yeah, it's six ohms. It says eight ohms, it's measuring six ohms, so I think that's gonna be just fine. Right, uh, so we've got our battery plugged in here now. So from here, let's see if we do have voltage going down to this area. So what have we got it on? We've got it on this one here. So ground. Yeah, we've got six volts there. Okay. And then when we turn it on, well, it's already on. Let's leave it off and see if we've got six volts here. No. Now let's turn it on. And we should have six volts here. We have. So from six volts here now, it's traveling down to this board here. So we know we've got power going into this board. Slightly worrying now because we have a blob chip here. Right, so that's, power's getting to that side. Let's see now, this side, is power getting to this side here? So we've got plus D, minus D, and ground at the top. So the black one's ground.
Well, we don't have anything there, I don't think. Let's undo this one here. Oh, I'll tell you what this is going to be from. This is going to be from the power jack, isn't it? So let's kill the power to this. And let's go to continuity. This one, I bet, feeds, the uh, feeds it when you have uh, power going in via the power jack. So let's go to continuity. And let's see what we've got. So if we were to go on the ground, is that coming up on the black one down here? Yes, it is. So now let's go on to the middle pin and let's see what that's coming up. That doesn't appear to be coming up anywhere. I wonder, is that going to there? Hmm. Let's have a look. Now, if you had a load of these to do, what you would do is you would just quickly swap over the boards and then you'd know then whether you're finding this one here or this one down here. But I've only got the one here, so I haven't got that luxury. Yeah, I think it's going through the diode, then through this coil here, this kind of choke thing, and then going up to the outer one here. Uh, that's to be, oh no, it's going to there, sorry. That's going to here still. So whether it's the battery or here, it's yeah, they're both going to here. Right, well, I'm not 100% sure what this is for over here. Oh, sorry, this is USB. This is from the USB here, because look, we have data plus, data minus, ground, and uh, five volts. Yeah, that's there. Okay, fine. Well, we know then that we've definitely got power going into this board here, so I don't think it's anything to do with this board here. So that's for the time being, let's pop this back on here. Looks like there's another mini blob chip there as well. Oh, this is going to be the screen as well, isn't it? Yes, this is going to be the screen. Right, I'm going to take a picture of what goes where because I need to unplug some of these. Oh, so hold on, these are not being used. These are not being used for speakers, are they? They're just noticing the vibrations, I think. So rather than you know putting the signal through into this and letting this vibrate, this must be picking up the vibrations and pushing it through to here to register that it's been hit. Would that be it? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. Right, now that I've got most things unplugged, just in case somehow something was putting a fault on the line, let's see now if anything's going to happen. Yeah, they're just on the Zebra connectors there. No. I'm going to plug this speaker back in because I want to hear it make that noise. Oh, the speaker left this little thing behind. But that's not going to make a difference. Yeah, it still makes that noise. dead. 
So with this board here, this is just for doing the, the additional inputs, like you know those foot pedals? Like the hi-hat and the bass. And that's going to be a headphone jack and uh, you know audio in. So, I can't see it being a problem with that. It has to be something on this board here, doesn't it? Because on here again, it's just a load of inputs from the button presses. As soon as you turn it on, I presume something should come up on this screen. Right, let's just double check. Let's have a look, see if we can see where. Okay, so we're gonna have plus, oh, it says here plus nine volts. Let's see if we do have plus nine volts on these two contacts here. Now am I on? Right, so that's on. Hmm, 5.9, it definitely says plus nine. So we've only got the six volts there. And this is labeled up wrong. What is the uh, input to back, I wonder? Oh, six volts on the way in. But that could have been changed. Maybe the board's labeled up at nine, but maybe it is uh, six volts everywhere. Because it is four batteries, isn't it? Which is six volts. So we definitely have voltage going into this here. So I suppose it's just going to be a case of, can we trace where that goes to? It doesn't look like anything's happening on top. Let's zoom right in, see if it makes any more sense. Where's the main power rail coming in? Is it this one here going to this voltage regulator? Right, well, when I go onto here and here, I've got 5.9 volts. Now, what have I got coming out of here? Nothing. 5.9. Now, let me kill power a second. Let's see if that's linked to that. Yes, it is. So, we've got 5.9 going in, but then we've got nothing happening. Now, is this grounds here? Let's see if this is grounds. Yes, it is. So that's grounds, and that is the positive there. So this must be the output here, and we haven't got anything here, have we? Why not? Is it being pulled down? Have we got a short somewhere? Let's have a look. So this is the ground. No. Hmm. Does that suggest the voltage regulator has failed? Because then it goes from there and it goes through where? Through this capacitor? That's the negative side there. So does it go here and up, 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 around, around, into here, into here, into here, to a via there. Let's just roughly see where that via goes. Just roughly. Oh, behind the uh, behind the screen. Right, I'm thinking, let's plug power back into this. I'm now thinking it might be something to do with that voltage regulator. Luckily it's got markings on. Because if I go between here and here, sorry, one second. If I go between here and here, we've got 5.9 volts. Unless it only needs half a volt. I think what we should do is, I think I'm gonna look up this one online see if I can find it. This one here is a voltage regulator. So if you look up here, 
I believe this is it. BL8503. And uh, it says here that it is ideal for, it can greatly improve the natural life of batteries. So it's a low power consumption, low dropout voltage, three terminal regulator. Uh, can provide 250 milliamps of output current when input output voltage differential drops to 400 millivolts. And it says that it does an input range of 1.5 volts to 10 volts an output range of 1.2 volts to 6 volts. So we're putting in 6 volts and yet we're only getting 0.5 volts out. So that's definitely not correct, is it? Because if it was 1.5 volts in, it should be 1.2 volts out. If it's 10 volts in, it should be 6 volts out. So 6 volts is going to be what? 5-ish? 4-ish? 4 point something? And we're not getting that. And if we have a look down here, you can see I think that this is our one here. And we have ground. This is the voltage in and three should be voltage out. And remember, we're not getting anything. So that's the thing that goes through the capacitor and then down into the uh, somewhere near the blob chip. So what I'm thinking is if we were to roughly put it back together, how about if I was to get my bench power supply and put four volts into it? Because remember, when we have fresh batteries in, it could be 1.6, uh, what's that going to be? maybe 6.4-ish volts going into it. And as the batteries get weaker, it could go down to 5 point something volts and maybe it would still work. So if we were to try to put in maybe four volts and see what happens, see if we get any life, then we've kind of proved that the fault is on this one here. I think that might be a good idea. Right, so let me just roughly try to put it back together. I still need access to this part here. Now this is gonna be awkward to do because I need to enter voltage into here yet I need to see the screen. So I think maybe I should pop on the soldering iron and let's see if we can just run a little wire from here out and that way then I can just access, for example, a, uh, I can just put the negative onto here and that should go through to here. Let's just make sure it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so all the negatives are connected through. So I'm just gonna clamp my bench power supply onto here and then a wire out from this voltage out pin on the right hand side. Just gonna kill power to it. Okay, so now I can turn it the right way around and I can just have this wire sticking out the side. And you can see we're now gonna push the four volts into the circuit. Right, I'm collecting the batteries back up. Okay, I'm gonna turn on my bench power supply. I'm just gonna set it to, let's be safe to begin with, let's set it to 3.5 volts. But I don't think it will work at that. And I just wanna double check what my amps are. Let's just leave that one amp. Okay, here goes. So, turn it on. What do you think, yes or no, or is it gonna blow up? Ready? Yes! Brilliant, we've proved it. It's the, uh, it's the uh, voltage regulator. Right, enter. Oh, I've got nothing plugged in, have I? Brilliant. Should we just plug something in? Why is it still on? Oh, it's still on because I've got voltage going into it. 
Let's just quickly connect. Am I spoiling it by connecting up something? Because you're going to hear the sounds then. No, let's do the bench power supply. We know now that it's definitely the, the voltage. Uh, sorry, bench power. What am I on about? Let's do the, uh, let's see if we can get the voltage regulator and let's leave the sounds to the very end. So obviously the uh, voltage regulator, I suppose, is one of the things that's working the hardest in this because it's constantly regulating the voltage and it's just failed. I'm going to see if I've got anything in the house that I can use, whether I've got any voltage regulators that may work. Uh, if not, I'll have to try and buy one of them. So uh, bear with me a while. Okay, so I've had a look at what I've got and I've got one that will fit the pin out perfectly but it looks a little on the small side and also it's only outputs a fixed 3.3 volts. Now, maybe it will work on 3.3 volts. I don't know. I think when we tested it there, it was, uh, I can't remember what I had it on now. Let me turn this on, was it four volts? Was that 3.5 at the moment? Maybe 3.3 would be okay. Anyway, I've got ones that are slightly beefier. The problem with these is the pinout's different. So I need the pinout to be ground on this side, which it is, then I need voltage in and then I need voltage out. Well, with these ones, they're the wrong way round. Now, these are AMS1117 and they're in fixed output voltages of 3.3 volts or 5 volts. So now, I bought these ages ago. Can't remember what for, but this is the 5 volt one and this is the 3.3. So I'm thinking, 3.3, I'm thinking if I was to put in a 5 volt one, we may get away with it. And it is an LDO, like a low dropout voltage regulator. Annoyingly though, it is much bigger and the pins are in the wrong orientation. But look, we've got all this room here that I can stick it to. And then I can just run wire to the, the corresponding pads. So I'm thinking we might be okay. Hope five volts isn't gonna to be too much. These things were cheap, I still had the receipt. There was something like two pounds something for 10 of them. Nine, 10, yeah, and I haven't used any, so I don't know what I bought them for. It's much bigger. Should we try that? Now, I know we should just be replacing it like for like, but a quick search on, on uh, eBay didn't show them for sale. Now, I don't think they're gonna be rare. I'm sure I would be able to get them. So maybe if I was to do, how, how could I do this? I think what we need to do is we need to take off the old one to begin with. Do you know what? Save me using hot air. I'm going to use low melt solder. Doesn't it come off so easy with the low melt?
Now on this one, one second now, this was the one that came off. So you can see the middle pin's connected through. On this one, is this actually connected anywhere? Yes it is. So that's the voltage out. This is the voltage out there. So, that's going to be ground. Do you know what, I think I should just run wires because they're all going to be in the way, aren't they? If I was to kind of glue that there, then I could just run the wires, couldn't I? So we're going to be going this one to here, this one jump over to here, and that one can be soldered onto there. Do you know what, should I just tap a bit of solder on that there to get it in, in the right position? Right, now I just have to do a jumper wire from there to there. Now what I'm going to do is, rather than jumping over here, I'm going to just wrap it round here to make sure it doesn't, uh, you know, there's no way that it can short. Right, okay, so now we have, let's just make sure we got this right. Ground, it's definitely ground. Number two is voltage out, which is going round to here, which is then going through to this capacitor. And voltage three is voltage in, sorry, number three is voltage in, and that's going to this one here. And they are all fully soldered on. So I think, I think that's going to work as long as that voltage regulator does actually work. Five volts might be too high. I hope I don't damage this now. See, the other one was 10 volts in, six volts out, which is 40%, isn't it? So now if we've got 6.4 in, let me just... What's 6.4 take away 40%? 3.84, hmm. Oh, is five volts gonna to be too high? I'm wondering now if I should put the 3.3 .3 volt in, even though I've just done all that. I've got nervous now. I'm thinking the lower voltage, if it works, is gonna be safer, isn't it? It's only if it doesn't work that there's gonna be a problem and then I can put the higher one in. Do you know what? I'm gonna go for the lower voltage one. I know that's ridiculous because I've just soldered this one in, but look. Uh, on this one it's labelled up as 3.3 .3, and this one here is labelled up as 5. There's a 5 here. Yeah, let me swap it over. It shouldn't take long now that I've soldered, I've run the wire and stuff.
Right, okay, so that's uh, back on there now. This way you see, if it's too low, then it's not, I don't think it will cause damage, it just won't work properly. While if I put something that's too high in, then I could blow it. Right, let's pop this back together. I'm just gonna be looking at the pictures just to make sure I've got it all the same. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start filming again just as I'm about to turn it on. Right, I've got them all wired up, the same as the photo I took earlier. So now let's plug in the battery here. So I think we're all good to go. Here goes. Fingers crossed. Excellent. Club rock. Interesting. So it doesn't do it there. Are these sensitive? So I think there's two levels, soft and hard. Excellent. Hip hop. How do you do volume then? Oh, the volume does work. I really enjoyed that one. Let me get the screws back in it and then finish up the video. So here we have it all set up on the table and it's all working fine, including the foot pedals. That's that one. And that one there. Now I've had a go at drumming myself and it is incredibly hard and also I have zero rhythm. So I'm handing the honor over to my son who also finds it really hard and has uh, not much rhythm either. But here we go, over to Ben. There we go. But what we have worked out is we got a nice way of an, uh, the ending of a joke. So here we, here we go. Why does a golfer wear two pairs of trousers? I don't know. Why does he wear two pairs of trousers? In case it gets a hole in one. <laughs> there we go. Ah. Oh. Well, what an interesting little repair. What I liked there was the fault finding of it. And it, again, a whole thing not working just from a component which is tiny and when you buy it in a pack of 10, costs about 20 something P. So massive thumbs up to Raj for sending that into my PO box. Again, like I said earlier, it's not something I would have thought to look at, but in my opinion, I think that's made a really interesting fix. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and I will hopefully see you again very soon.